United Kingdom. Uh, Rishi Sunak, UK's Prime Minister, meeting Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a firm handshake, only testimony to the firm ties now between India and the United Kingdom. Uh, India, as uh, has been discussed already, is the first visa national country to benefit from the scheme that has been launched by the United Kingdom, highlighting the strength of the UK-India Migration and Mobility Partnership that was agreed last year and will perhaps be taken forward by Rishi Sunak as was being discussed earlier also on CNN News 18. This bilateral is perhaps also going to put into shape together the much touted FTA agreement between India and the United Kingdom. As we were also telling you that there are creases which need to be ironed out. For more details, let's quickly go across uh, to our managing editor, Zaka Jacob, who joins me live from the newsroom. Zaka, uh, a very, very significant meeting out of all the bilaterals that have taken today, uh, taken place today, I'll say. And this will be the last one that Prime Minister Modi will have uh, at the G20 in Bali. Right after this meeting, he uh, will emplane for Delhi. Uh, this is important because it's the first time that uh, both Prime Ministers are meeting, Rishi Sunak and uh, Prime Minister Modi, in a formal bilateral on the sidelines of the G20. Yesterday, they had an informal interaction at the opening session. Uh, brief pleasantries were exchanged. Uh, but this is a formal bilateral. It's going to last for about half an hour. And after that, uh, like I said, the Prime Minister will leave. The biggest uh, talking point, of course, will be around the FTA. We were talking about this uh, moments ago, about how Sunak said uh, just before this bilateral began, that yes, we are committed to the FTA, but these things need to be done right. Uh, there is concern, obviously, in the Conservative government in the UK about immigration, about, uh, you know, Indians, quote unquote, overstaying their visa. Right. Uh, they've give, given a, a, a number of about, uh, um, a, a number of Indians who are sort of uh, who come there either on tourist visas or on limited uh, period visas and then overstay that, some of them for years on end. Uh, this had become a big concern uh, within the Conservative government. You heard Suela Braverman, uh, who is the Home Secretary, mm -hmm. uh, talk about it publicly. Uh, so Sunak uh, cannot be seen as you know not being worried about that issue. That's an issue that is core for the Conservative voters. So he'll have to uh, show something in that FTA that addresses that concern. As far as India is concerned, you know, I think speed is of the essence. Uh, when Boris Johnson was here back in April when he was Prime Minister, and it seems like a long time ago, uh, but he had publicly said that by Diwali we'll wrap up the FTA. Diwali's come and gone. Uh, we don't have an FTA in place yet. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see the finer details of what exactly is agreed upon between India and the UK in that free tra trade agreement. Remember, the, the primary reason why uh, Britain left the European Union, why Brexit right. happened, was because they felt they were getting a raw deal uh, still being part of the common European market and that they could get a better deal with FTAs with uh, individual big countries, whether it's India or the United States. None of those free trade agreements have been put on the table yet, have been signed yet. And I think that is something that the Conservatives uh, will be acutely aware of. Absolutely. Indeed, uh, the FTA remains a significant aspect of this. But the other aspect also that people are talking about is how Rishi Sunak has uh, you know, given a green signal to 3,000 UK visas for Indians. Uh, taking that as a talking point, Zaka, do you think this is also a sort of a damage control exercise being done by Rishi Sunak at the moment? Because uh, if one were to consider what Suela Braverman had to say just a month ago, that is exactly what also uh, was one factor that led to the fall of the previous government. Well, yeah, you know, Sanjay is also joining us and he, he will attest to this. I, I don't think 3,000 is such a large number. Right. Uh, especially given the number of Indian tourists who go to the UK, uh, the kind of cultural linkages we have, the people-to-people -people contact. Uh, I think anywhere between half a million to a million Indian tourists uh, visit the UK every year. So 3,000 is not a large number. Uh, again, the, the concerns are around, you know, uh, what kind of uh, people will get these visas? High school graduates, uh, university graduates, what kind of jobs will they get in the UK? Uh, I think India is uh, also concerned about uh, some of the high-tech uh, sector folks who are there whether it's in uh, IT or in other high-tech sectors. Uh, remember, in the U.S., we've had this long-standing and long-pending issue around H-1B visas. Uh, nothing similar is happening in the U.K., but there are concerns that uh, well-qualified people, whether it is students who go to the U.K. universities and study there, uh, they are not able to find jobs, they are not able to find uh, you know, mm. adequate visas to stay on there, or simply uh, that uh, you know, Indian companies who sent their workers and deputation to the U.K., uh, they are not able to stay there for uh, required periods of time. These are concerns that need to be addressed from the British side, of course. 
they would want uh, some of these anti-dumping duties, some of these tariffs uh, removed as well. India has committed to some of them. So all of these need to be ironed out. But I think the single biggest sort of stumbling block, if you will, uh, would be the issue of immigration, certainly from uh, Britain's point of view. Absolutely. And and since you mentioned that stumbling block, let me also quickly go across to Sanjay Suri, who's joining us live on the broadcast. Sanjay, you heard what Zaka had to say. There are some creases which need to be ironed out, FTA being one. The other aspect is, of course, immigration. But it's also important to talk about how uh, the crucial border of contention between India and the UK remains time. Time is of crucial essence. Well, uh, if the FDA and immigration have been joined into one issue by the new government in UK led by Rishi Sunak. And this is really the balancing act that Britain is working on together with India, of course, to arrive at some sort of conclusion. On the one hand, uh, Britain is keen to have an FDA and an FDA to show off because the negotiated and uh, the promised one with the US is off the table is not happening mm. and it never was likely to happen that uh, trade with the US uh, across the Atlantic would somehow uh, substitute effectively a loss of trade with the EU. A lot of uh, Brexit critics had said it would not happen and that indeed is not happening. There have been some agreements uh, signed but these have continued from older agreements that Britain had signed up to as a part of the EU. So the big new deal really is potentially with India. There has been an agreement with Australia, but again, more by way of an extension of earlier agreements. So the India deal is the big one to offer. The difficulty is that Rishi Sunak is pledged into linking that with migration issues and for India to take back its undocumented uh, migrants. The question is whether really that is possible and practical at this late stage. Certainly there could be an argument for stopping these people coming in, but 10-15 years down the line, very difficult now to uproot these people and for India to identify them and then make arrangements to take them back. Absolutely. If I could quickly go back to Zaka also. Zaka, as I was asking Sanjay as well, how time is of the essence, because let's not forget that the FTA was postponed from uh, October to December and now we are uh, being informed that, you know, this is likely to get finalized by March of 2023. So this certainly, uh, certainly a lot rests upon uh, uh, the FTA as far as the UK government is concerned. Yeah, I think, look, uh, the, the whole proposal of the free trade agreement, if you go back uh, to a couple of years ago when the negotiations started, it started right after Brexit. And Sanjay is right. I mean, what the Conservative government uh, and Boris Johnson in particular, what he promised to uh, uh, the, the British people was that uh, staying on with the EU was a, was a raw deal. Uh, being part of the common European market was a raw deal. Uh, instead, you come out of it uh, through Brexit and you can sign these FTAs with other major countries around the world, uh, India and the United States uh, in particular. Clearly, the UK is not going to have an FTA with China. That is going to be absolutely detrimental to the, to the UK. Uh, so then who are you left with? Ultimately, uh, India is only the, the, one of the big countries, one of the big economies uh, who you can sign uh, a free trade agreement with. Also, if they have to go back to the people, and remember, general elections in the UK are less than two years away, this Conservative government needs to have something to show for. They need to go back to the people and say, right. you know, this is why you voted us into power. This is why we did Brexit. And now in return, instead of Brexit, we're giving, giving you this better deal. Uh, instead of association with the European Union being part of the common European market, we're giving you this instead, which is far better. Right now, they have nothing to show for on the table. And that's why I think time is, is absolutely critical for the UK government. But having said that, I don't think they're going to rush through this whole issue of immigration because...